Angelina. I like that she's here. Very nice. She's a great speaker. I know. <laughs> Hours and uh, anyways, I think this is uh, it's quite we're all together. I think that's what is most important. Uh, so allow me to introduce myself. Um, my name is JP Maracha, and I'm uh, a WSIB representative here for the United Steelworkers Local 6500. And on behalf of Local 6500, I want to welcome each and every one of you to this ceremony where we remember our fallen workers our fallen brothers that have passed through the occupational disease. We honor their names and we pause to recognize their loss of life, simply burning the living. Au nom des métallos, local 6500, je vous souhaite la bienvenue à chacun d'entre vous. Nous nous souvenons de nos frères décédés d'une maladie professionnelle. Nous honorons leur nom et on pose pour reconnaître les temps de vie humaine simplement de leur vie. So a lot of people have been asking me, uh, why, JP, why, why do you have a ceremony about this? And the quick answer is, well, it's important for us. It's important for us to recognize our fallen brothers. And I guess that's a, a very selfish reply. But the real reason we're here is, is to talk about Vic and how Vic was given a year to live seven years ago. This man impressed me with his joie de vivre, and in fact, I credit his, his positive vibes for his longevity. I met Vic for the first time, we were talking about another plane. He had carpal tunnel. And I was telling Vic, there's no need to pursue your carpal tunnel. They, they gave you 100% for your cancer. You're not gonna get anymore. But Vic said, I, I, yeah, but I want to do it for other people. Impressive. George, George is another icon in Hammer. I'm from Hammer, he's a sports icon. And George was the same way. I was struggling with, with two occupational disease files and I, I requested some pensioners from the copper refinery to come down and give me a hand. And George was one of them. He was still in his treatments for his his cancer. He was in his end of life journey. And he came out to help me. <coughs> Phenomenal man. Those two claims have since been allowed. So Ivan and, and Melton uh, benefited from, from George's sacrifice and some of the boys and the great help from him. <coughs> um, but the stories with Ivan and Melton uh, waiting eight years for a claim to be allowed is crazy. 
it's crazy, and it's it creates a lot of suffering for for the widows. And we need to change that. We need to talk about we need to talk about Dean. Dean was the first occupational disease victim that was still in the workplace. Uh, he left behind a, a young widow and an 18 year old boy. That was the first one. Uh, Dean was a rugged miner. Uh, he didn't mend his word. And, and like most of us, the industrial language kind of shines through. But fought, fought to the very end. So we need to talk about Ricardo. There's a gentleman comes into my office and I didn't even think he was sick. He had a, a great sense of humor and, and, and very easy to talk to. And, and of course, he leaves behind a, a wonderful wife that I, I chat with all the time. And the man in the mirror looks nothing like me. we could take the Lear Gerard Memorial Park and add the names of people who have passed away for occupational disease, uh, I just, I told him there was absolutely no reason why we shouldn't. And one of the reasons is that I myself have been affected twice in my life from a, uh, an accident in the workplace. Uh, my wife lost her brother back in 1972, several weeks after we got married, in, in an accident in the back. And just a few years ago, my son's wife lost her brother in, a, in an accident at the smelter. And so I know how devastating uh, an accident can be on a family. It's, it, you go to work, you expect to come home, and something happens. But I also know from growing up in life and my wife growing up in Creighton, that our parents and our grandparents went to work every day and worked in conditions that today would be just untenable. But they went to work. And they ended up suffering from diseases that they got from work. And so for us to say we're, we're going to remember the people who have passed away from accidents in the workplace, as well as from occupational disease is, I think, the next step to empowering people like yourselves. You don't need politicians to do this. But empowering employees to question their, their, their management and question the people they're working for and say, I don't think the conditions that I'm working in are healthy. You can't fall asleep for the dreams that may come Fills my lungs. If life is a blessing, then please let it be. Someday God's light give these poor souls relief. Yeah, back on my head. Shoes. Back on my heart from the 
Dr. Mo Ani. My name is Hans Shirina, and I'm the MPP for Nickelback. I, uh, I'm going to begin and then I'll hand the mic over to, to Franz. Uh, I want to start with the land recognition and just to recognize that Sudbury is part of the Robinson Huron Treaty Territory. And this is the land, the traditional land of the Dikmishin and the Shnavik. It's important to remind ourselves, especially people like myself who are settlers, my grandparents came from Scotland, but we all have a role to play in that uh, treaty territory. We both own that. Uh, I was thinking about what to talk about today and I want to be brief because the most dangerous thing you can do is give a politician a wireless mic. Um, <laughs> but I want to be brief, and interestingly, on Facebook, it reminded me eight years ago, I wrote a letter to the editor about why we should keep the name the Leo Gerard Workers Memorial Park. There was a controversy originally because it was named and they didn't follow the proper procedures and was challenged, and I wrote a letter to the editor, I wasn't a politician, I was just a steel worker, talking about the history of health and safety through the steel workers, and Leo Gerard, as the international president, was a symbol of that, and just very briefly, in terms of health and safety, the majority of major milestones that have come out of uh, health and safety in Ontario have come through steel workers, have come out of this local, or have come out of Northern Ontario. The Occupational Health and Safety Act, for example, would not exist in its current form if it wasn't for steel workers in Elliott Lake, who went on a wild gas strike, which gave us our three rights, the right to know, the right to, to participate, and the right to refuse unsafe work. That was a milestone that was moved forward. And that the, the, the pinnacle of that was the former president of this union, Homer Sege, who was in France and attended a conference and broke the news about occupational disease that caused this uproar and this frustration. <clears throat> Fast forward just a few years ago, this local fought to have the mining regulations reviewed. And the government at the time said it'll never happen. But it did happen because we pushed for it as a community, not just the local. But it's steel workers. When you think of West Trade, the bill that says that if, as an employer, through negligence, it leads to the death of a worker, that you should be criminally responsible. That was never going to happen, but it was steel workers who brought that forward, and steel workers who pushed for it. And 10 years after it became the law, it was steel workers who pushed for the province to move forward with actual charges. And I, there's many more examples I can give, but I do want to be brief because today isn't about the steel workers. It's like JP said today is about helping others. just told us is that the process of dying from an accident is often sudden. From an occupational disease, it will affect the whole family, it will affect the community for days, weeks, months, and years. I want you to look around at all the women in this room this morning. Look around and look at all the women that are there. Most of them are widows, or most of them have lost their dad. Life will continue. Life was hard when their husband was sick, when the compensations would not recognize that they got sick because of what they did at work, because of everything they had to go through to finally get compensation, and often, they pass away before the cases are finally go through the X number of appeal and the families suffer and the community suffers. Many of those women come to see me as their MPP when they are part of the 6500 family. I know that there will be light at the end of the tunnel. I know that the family will surround them, help them, support them, but for many other workers who face occupational disease, they face it alone, their family face it alone, and there is never a happy ending of WSIB recognizing that they got sick because they got up every morning, put in a full day and went to work, and they refused to recognize that. The work that 6500 has done has helped their members, have helped the widows, the children, but it has helped many, many other uh, workers 
because of the precedence that they put, that, that they stand for, and, and because they put in the work, the effort, the time to succeed. Today, we honor those mainly men who died of occupational disease. We have to remember their names. We have to learn their stories because this is how we move forward in a world where when you go to work, you come home at night and that you continue to be healthy for as long as you both shall live. I thank you for being here today. If you have an opportunity, give these women a big hug. It feels good. C'est pas un choix que j'ai fait C'est dans mon sang Ouais, puis mon père À chaque matin On descend dans un trou Pour gagner notre pain La mine, c'est une question de survie. Si la mine a ferme, ben le village ferme aussi. Fait qu'on se lève tous les jours, même si on sent pas capable pour qu'on puisse mettre du pain. Pizza bar sur la table. We just quickly cover a few incidents uh, that are very tragic, but workers who are chronically exposed to workplace hazards over many years while they are providing for their families do not garner the same attention. <clears throat> Today is about acknowledging uh, local 6,500 members who have fallen to occupational disease. <coughs> We have been working diligently for years, helping families that have been affected by occupational disease in our workplace. We will continue our work through WSIB department, JP Marocha and Blair Patterson. Thank you for all the work that you do. Uh, we also have 11 full-time worker safety reps in the plants and a uh, health and safety executive that work every day to work, reduce workplace exposures. Thank you to that, to those for their daily commitment for reducing workplace re exposure. I personally have been affected by uh, noise-induced hearing loss and my father passed away from lung cancer and he was a crusherman at a mine up in Timmins. So, uh, occupational disease touches everyone in one way or another. So with that, it's our duty to honor the memories of these men and women and to continue to fight for safer workplaces, greater enforcement of our laws, and true accountability for employers responsible for workplace deaths and injuries. Thank you. Now we move on to the uh, memorial portion of the event today. So I will announce a name. Hans will ring the bell. And if you are here uh, on behalf of a uh, fellow member, please stand and we will deliver a rose to you. <coughs> David Chokan. Victor Duro. Yvonne Lavelle.
Marcel, will you? <laughs> Melton Melnick. George McNamara. Ricardo Nusin. Norman Cannell. Lionel Harbour. Berger Awalt. Jerry Brennan. Gordon Bruce. Andre Bruni. Renee Delaire. Edward DeSanti. Bonne ta bouteille d'eau, puis coule-moi là dans le dos. J'ai le corps tout fini, j'ai les mains engourdies. Ma face est toute noire, j'ai besoin d'une bouffée d'air. Inquiète-toi pas, maman. so diligently. I'm going to go over some history so that uh, all of you will know the level of dedication of the leadership of local 6500 and steelworker staff representatives across the province. In the mid-1970s, Eli Martel, Bud Germa, Floyd Lagren created a group of in people inside the Ontario government with Stephen Lewis and they fought to get a commission to study what was going on in the mining industry in Ontario but not only that industry across Ontario it came up with the ham commission as it's called it gave workers the right to know and the right to refuse unsafe work by the time that got passed it was in the mid to late 70s I was privileged to get elected to be the district director. I can't remember exactly if it was 85 or 86. And Homer Senge, John Gagno, Mo Shepard from Timmins. We met with our local unions 
and we decided a couple of things. We needed to find out what was going on in the mines and plants in District 6, which is Ontario. We had to find out uh, what was going on with research, and we needed to mount a campaign. Burton Senior, Maurice Rainville, Torino Roberti, Angelo Rocca, Stanley Smith, Bertrand Susi. Norman Terrian.